Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tavern No Spaces, and if you don't know me, I do videos on software engineering tech. And today we're gonna talk about, hopefully in 10 minutes or less, my experience studying computer science at Princeton. So we're gonna do this by going through my classes year by year and examining some of the classes that I took in order to get my degree. So first off, I'd like to talk to you all about my experience coming out of high school. Actually in high school, I was initially looking at majoring in mechanical engineering coming into college. I was really interested in that because I had done some work with robotics and I had built in a robot competition. I also did a, an internship the summer before I went to college. So that internship was at a robotics firm in my town. They did all sorts of work on robots with NASA and space and defense projects. So when I came to the internship, I was initially working, planning on working on mechanical design for the internship. But when I got there, they actually needed software interns. I actually didn't really have any experience with software. Um, I had never coded before, never taken a coding class. We didn't even have them at my school. And I'm just thankful for that opportunity. It introduced me to software, but I was really intimidated, I gotta say, at that point. So actually there's two ways you can take computer science at Princeton. There's engineering computer science and then there's non-engineering computer science. So it's a difference between a, a, a bachelor's of science and engineering degree versus a, a bachelor of arts degree. I took the bachelor of science and engineering route because I wanted to keep my options open in case I wanted to still go down mechanical engineering or something like electrical engineering. So in order to do that, I had to fulfill more preliminary requirements that are necessary if you are a bachelor's of science and engineering uh, degree student. Going into college, my first semester, we were required as engineers to take at least one class in computer science and that's the introduction to computer science and pretty much immediately I fell in love with coding although I was I will I gotta say I wasn't very good at it there was a lot of people who had a lot of experience coding who were much better at it coming in uh, than me some people who had coded apps before and who had built all sorts of projects it was almost trial by fire where I got to learn really quickly in coast 126 what are all the underlying things that were happening with my code and how to make sure that it was working correctly. Finally, one cool part about Coast 126 is we got to do a whole simulation of different planets going around the sun. And for extra credit, we played uh, some theme music that was, I think something like Star Wars themed music. And it was really sweet because it sounded super epic and you could hear in our in our room when we go to office hours, everyone's computers were playing this, uh, this Star Wars music. Outside of that, there was these special freshman seminars at Princeton. And those freshman seminars are only open to freshmen and basically, what they are is small size group classes about specialized topics that change each year and each semester. And so in my case, um, there was one called Scientists Against Time and it was about the history of World War II, all of the technology that was built and developed during then. Obviously, I'm, I'm into technology and so that was really cool looking at through time, how has technology shifted and like how did wartime accelerate a lot of the technological developments that happened early on in the 20th century. I also got to take uh, another freshman seminar and that freshman seminar was on psychology, but it was specifically on the psychology of Freud. It was quite an interesting class. Like we, it wasn't a traditional take on Freud. If you think of Freud, you probably think of Freudian slips. Although that it, we did cover that very briefly, we actually went into a lot of his writings and works on other musings he had had. And I decided to get a lot of my prereqs out of the way my freshman year. So freshman spring, I also took linear algebra. We also as freshmen all had to take a writing seminar, which was to help prep us for writing. And mine was pretty cool. I got to write about climate change, which 
I'd love to make a separate video about. Also, I decided to get another one of the computer science uh, courses out of the way. And this one was COS 226. COS 226 is uh, our algorithms and data structures class. We went into depth about each data structure and each algorithm. This class was super useful for interviews, for knowing all the leak code problems, being able to answer those. Also, even sometimes we'd have examples of questions that you would ask uh, related to those problems. My final class I took in my freshman spring was a Portuguese class and uh, I'm actually half Portuguese and I had learned Portuguese growing up but I really wanted to learn more about the grammar and structure of Portuguese and that actually led into my first summer. My first summer I, I ended up studying abroad in Portugal to study Portuguese even more so I took like the second advanced version of Portuguese and my summer study abroad. Then heading into my sophomore year, I needed to take one more class to qualify to become a computer science major, and that was COS 217. COS 217 delved more into C programming, memory allocation, pointers, even a little bit of hacking. So one of the coolest projects we got to do is implement a buffer overflow attack. Actually, how we did well in the project is you needed to overflow the buffer and insert a character to give yourself a new grade. So sophomore year, things started to get also more interesting because I got to take more classes that were less tied directly to my prerequisites. I took my third Portuguese class and this class delved more into the Portuguese language and culture. Outside of that, I took Introduction to Microeconomics and finally, last but not least, my Introduction to Entrepreneurship class. And this Introduction to Entrepreneurship class was super interesting because it got me into thinking about what could I actually build with software that would enable me to start a business? You know, I had watched The Social Network, read about like all different founders of Google and Facebook and uh, YouTube and you know, on this platform. All of that was really super inspiring to me. I, I ended up getting a, a minor in entrepreneurship at Princeton um, as I continued on taking more classes, which we'll go through pretty soon. But besides that um, introduction to entrepreneurship class, I think my software year I really started to discover and find my way of which classes I enjoyed taking. Going into my sophomore spring I still had to take the second course of physics. I had really put this one off because my first physics class I just didn't really have that much fun but going into my second physics class I actually did end up enjoying it more. So my second physics class was on electro more on electromagnetic fields and less on and forces rather than um, like Newtonian mechanics, you know, you know, things hitting together and like how they move around and stuff. And besides physics, my other class that I, I decided to take was my first higher level computer science class. And that class was COS 333. And it was pretty universally known at Princeton to be one of the more fun classes. You got to take this class and you work with other people to build an app or build a website. My team actually built something with Python. And it was a web app that allowed people to book meals and match with people to, to meet for meals. And I think that's like something that a lot of people experience when they come to college is how do I get to know other people and what what are ways that can spark spontaneous conversations and spontaneous meetups. Now, in addition to my engineering requirements, I got to take a couple of humanities courses. One of those courses was intro to financial accounting and the professor was a visiting professor from New Chicago School of Business and he was really awesome. He talked through all sorts of real life examples and he really brought accounting to life because to be honest, I didn't really expect much out of an accounting class. And I took a Latinx uh, studies class and so that class was really interesting because uh, I identify as Latino. I'm half Bolivian and I'm half Portuguese. And so being able to learn about my background, but also not just my background, but how Latinx identity has adapted and changed over time in the US. Growing up, I hadn't discovered much about my identity, so I really got the opportunity to learn a lot about that in many different ways through my study abroad and through classes at Princeton. So my sophomore year, I think I had talked to you about um, that interest in entrepreneurship, that entrepreneurial itch. 
And I started to pursue that. So I, I started my first startup. I was a technical co-founder, so I was building it out. And that summer I, I decided to build out the whole product. Suffice to say, I'll keep that short, but it was really interesting. I learned a ton, not only like tech skills of how to build a website or build a web app from uh, start to finish, but also really learning about how to conduct uh, interviews with people to try to figure out, is this something people want? It helped us pivot or iterate to be able to discover what people wanted. And so that would actually lead into my following summer, which I'll talk about uh, once I get to the end of my junior year. And so nice segue into my junior year. My junior year, I ended up doing a lot more classes related to my major. Of course, I started going a little deeper into different classes. Like for example, one of the classes we needed to take was reasoning about computation. It was labeled as a computer science class, but it was actually more uh, of a mathematics class. A couple of things that we learned in the class were really interesting. One of them, you can look it up if you want, called the birthday paradox, where I can explain it briefly, but basically in a room of 15 or 16 people, that there will be most likely two people that have the same birthday in that room. And although that sounds crazy, right? There's 365 days in the year. What are the odds that there's two people with the same birthday? It actually is uh, mathematically really sound. My other classes also were computer vision. Computer vision is all about telling a, a camera like this one to be able to tell, okay, what, what is a surface and distinguishing, you know, this background from me. And like Zoom backgrounds, right? Another example of computer vision. Now we see the applications far and wide. At the time, there wasn't actually a lot of a lot of this use in our day to day like it is now. Now the last two were uh, one was entrepreneurial leadership, which also went to my entrepreneurship uh, minor. And my final class I took was a sociology class, and it was a sociology of the cubicle. So it's actually looking into how do open offices versus cubicles and all the different sorts of office layout plans relate. And I think it'd be super interesting nowadays to examine how that looks with remote work, but that wasn't even something we were thinking about at the time. Actually, one of the best ways that's adapted for people who want to get focused work done, but also be creatively interacting is having a, a cubicle that is, it's not a square, but it's instead like a trapezoid. And so you can still have people in your peripherals, but you're also able to zone in and focus when you need to. Fun fact there, that's like, you don't really see those that often because it's not an efficient use of space, but they're actually really useful for productivity. Going into my junior spring, I took three classes that were related to computer science and also entrepreneurship. And those classes were, one was an independent work class where for the class we had to come up with what we wanted to work on. It was kind of like independent research. And for me, I actually ended up building an app for it. It was the first time I built an app. Outside of that class, I took another class, which was called the CTO class. Basically that class looked at a bunch of different case studies of businesses and how they got started and how they were innovating and what the role of a technical leader in large organizations is. Finally, one of the most famous classes for entrepreneurship at Princeton is called high tech entrepreneurship. It's been going on for probably 20 plus years now. Professor Keeney had been teaching it, has been teaching it for the past probably five to seven years. And he's been really awesome. Um, I, he's who I had for the class. And I learned a ton. The, the Probably the coolest part of the class is we got to pitch our own business idea to him at his office at the end of it. He runs a venture capital firm. And so it was pretty, you know, even intimidating or realistic about what it'd be like to pitch a new idea at a business meeting. Now, the last class I took was children's literature. Children's literature is super interesting because essentially what it is, we got to read kids books and young adult novels and then analyze them in a new context. So it was super popular. And it was also one of my favorite classes at Princeton. I think I got to read, um, I think I got to read the Hunger Games books, which was also really cool. Finally, my junior summer, my co-founder and I got into an accelerator program. And so we were working on working on our business over the summer. We had brought on uh, several teammates and they were super awesome. We got some traction, which was awesome too. And um, we actually kept working on it a little bit after that. Drum roll. 
we got into senior year. So senior year was by far my favorite year. I don't know if this is true with everyone, but it definitely was with for me. My first class was automated reasoning about software. And this class was a grad level class. And I gotta say, I really enjoyed taking a grad level class because it felt a little bit more geared towards independence and autonomy. The professor really trusted us to be able to figure out and do what we needed to do. The second one I took was Radical Innovation in Global Markets. That one was pretty cool. We got to learn about decision trees, what it's like when you're setting up new businesses in different areas of the world, and what do you have to consider when you're making uh, business decisions there. I also took one more computer science class, and that one was on contemporary logic design. So we actually worked on a, a small uh, breadboard and we were building um, processors. I got to learn more about computers and hardware and I would actually after college get more into learning about how to build a computer, what are the pieces of a computer, and this was the first uh, class that inspired me to do that. I took another English class inspired by my junior spring and it was with the same professor and this one went into science fiction. I became a huge fan after this class. One of the books was called Snow Crash and it's all about you know virtual reality and came up with basically the whole idea of the metaverse. So meta the company, they can give credit towards Snow Crash and the writer of that because they invented basically the metaverse. Finally, the last class I took was another sociology class and this was on money, work, and social life. I PDF'd this course and it was really interesting. It kind of talked about dynamics of those things, but it was hard to be able to give it my full effort because I had a full course load with my other classes. And now we reached my senior spring, probably the best time of my time at Princeton. I got to take one of the coolest computer science classes, which was information security. We got to do all sorts of cool things. Like one of them was we got this hard drive of a computer and then given that hard drive, we're supposed to inspect it and log into it and boot it up and then try to find deleted files and uncover someone who plotted this murder and they used this computer to plot it. And that was our assignment. And it was super cool by far. Most memorable uh, class project I'd ever done at Princeton. I also got to work on some senior independent work and that independent work ended up being this crawler scraper and given a, a search term, then it would crawl across Wikipedia and find related people to that term and determine a social net between pages to determine which pages are most influential and referenced from other pages. So for example, you could put in someone like maybe Kanye and then Kanye would be pulled up and you'd see who are the most influ influential rappers relative to Kanye, like Jay-Z for example, or Nicki Minaj. Now my last classes were pretty awesome. Um, one of them was a design thinking class. So if you've ever done one of those, it's really all about how to think differently and how to think creatively, but doing it in a systematic way. Actually, I used it at work uh, a couple weeks ago for a project that we were doing. And once again, I took another English class with the same professor because I just loved this professor and he taught amazingly. This class was called American Identities and it went into different texts that examined identities of Americans. It was super awesome, I loved that class. Also, last but definitely not least, I took a dance class. So at Princeton, you can actually take dance classes for credit and typically as a senior, you get access to them because you have the most priority in picking your courses. I loved dance. I ended up doing dance after college too. I joined a dance team. It was super cool because we got to, it was called Introduction to Choreography and we were able to make up our own pieces. And we actually presented those pieces at the end of the class and had a dance performance for some of our other students and friends uh, around the college. And that's my college career in a nutshell. Let me know if you're interested in a part two about this, about my career and what I did after college because I'd be happy to share that. Also, let me know what sort of classes you're interested in, what classes you took in college or you're already taking right now, or even if you went through a boot camp, what were some of the favorite things that you learned during that time? Finally, if you like this video and you like videos about software engineering, tech, uh, life, then please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to let you know anytime that I'm posting a new video. Finally, and you probably know it at this point, but one last thing, tabs are better than spaces. So see y'all in the next video, bye. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that I see. Oh.